So hi, today uh, we will talk about the controlled rectifiers uh, using tyristors. So they are also called tyristor rectifiers. And they are commonly used in high voltage DC transmission systems where you need a like really high voltage and high current uh, switching. And it is uh, sometimes used in uh, DC motor drives to control the armature voltage of, uh, of a DC motor. It's also possible to use them in traction applications where they you require a large amount of uh, starting current, uh, starting torque, etc. And there are also some usage in industrial loads, especially for welding equipment in uh, electronic welding uh, devices. They are used and in, they are also used in some uh, industrial heating equip equipment, industrial furnaces, etc. Okay, so the general schematic is, is like a diode rectifier but instead of uh, a diode we have a, a gate signal and we have a tyristor schematic here and the input can be a single phase and a three phase or more phases and first we will uh, today talk about the single phase tyristor rectifiers and the output uh, is a DC voltage and of course depending on the load you know the voltage can be can go up and down or there can be some harmonics but at the end of the day it's a rectifier and it converts uh, AC to DC, right? So different from uh, diode rectifiers, actually uh, tires rectifiers can operate in two quadrant and, and by two quadrant, uh, I mean it can, also, it can supply positive voltage and positive current, which, you know, diode rectifiers is capable of, but also you can supply negative voltage, negative voltage with some positive current. So it is either uh, rectification or it is working in inversion mode which we will uh, talk in the following uh, slide so vd can be from you know positive vd not positive vd but uh, positive to negative okay so let's start with a simple circuit and actually we discussed it in the last lecture about the operation of tyristors but just as a review right here we have a ac water source and we have a tyristor here and the tyristor is controlled by a, a gate a pulse or gate signal and then we have we have a resistive load so the idea is like if it were a diode a rectifier whenever it is forward biased it will start conducting but with the tyristor actually in order to start conducting we need to apply that gate signal and we can control you know the instant uh, the tyristor starts conducting so actually we can uh, control the output voltage so let's uh, see at the output voltage for that one so at that instant at that instant basically our uh, voltage is positive so if it were a diode it will just start uh, conducting but I'm just uh, waiting a little bit and I just apply gate signal at that point okay and that is usually shown by uh, alpha okay it's called also the firing angle and it is usually measured in uh, angles like in degrees or in radians and uh, starting from uh, at that instant zero right so and again gate signal usually in a practical it will be like a pulse shape and there's some limit on the you know peak value of that gate signal but there is no point on like applying a continuous gate signal because once it start once the tyristor starts conducting then it will uh, keep in the conduction mode even if you cut off uh, the gate signal anyway so when you apply that gate signal so you have that voltage here and then you know until now it was no conducting then you just start conducting so let me use red so the red is my output voltage, right? And since, remember, it was a, a resistive load, so basically there's uh, the direct relation uh, between VD and current. So they have the same shape and the current can jump because there's no inductive element. So now when the voltage is zero and when the current is zero, uh, it wants to go back, but at the end of the day, you know those tyristors behave uh, like a diode and it cannot uh, carry current in that direction okay it's not possible to carry current in the reverse direction so that is where it just stops conducting 
and when stop conducting there will be no current and no voltage and then you can apply another gate signal and it will move like this. So the idea is by moving that thing back and forth okay so you can actually control how much voltage are you are giving to the output so that is why you know they are called uh, control they are called controlled rectifiers because by changing alpha I will be able to uh, adjust the output voltage average output voltage okay and we will talk about those things so let's uh, have a look at that one and now uh, next to next to resistance I added a inductive and because of inductive there will be some uh, lagging effect as we have seen in the diode rectifiers let's have a look at uh, at that output voltage okay so now we are here okay so let me show it with red again so until here uh, and the initial point it is zero we started with zero current then i apply and the vd voltage is just here so whenever the whenever the thyristor is on i will see supply voltage here okay and the output voltage vd voltage will be like that right but the current in the previous one the current it was just resistive and the current was just jumping but but because of we have inductive uh, component then there will be a, some delay okay there will be some delay in the current so it will uh, not jump you know you cannot change the inductor current instantaneously and that is that one is uh, current but it is still let's have a look at here you know we are uh, output voltage is actually uh, vr is equal r times i so they are you know directly related so what can i say about the vl so vl vl is equal you know you have the vd voltage on one side minus vr or i can write vd minus r times i right so and that one inductor voltage is l di over dt and it is vd minus r i i mean for simplicity you can take r is equal to one ohm and you will see the difference between voltage and current uh, will tell us how the derivative of the current is changing right so here we have a higher vd and uh, the current or vr is actually smaller so that difference that difference uh, increases there's a positive derivative here until when until both of these two are equal at that point vl is zero since vl is zero actually uh, di over dt is also zero so that means i've reached the peak value and after that point after that point so now my voltage is getting lower and now i have a negative uh, difference here and my current my current actually you know at the, in that region di over dt is negative so my current is reducing so at that instant I mean, it is similar to the diode rectifiers at p so uh, vd becomes less than zero but that doesn't uh, make any difference because uh, for our thyristor it is not about vs because it is not uh, ground the only thing that it sees is the voltage difference here or as long as there's some positive current as long as there's some positive current it will still uh, stay in conduction mode right so at that point at that point yes the supply voltage is negative but we still have some positive voltage uh, in the thyristor and it's still in the conduction mode and it will keep in the conduction mode until the current reaches to zero okay i l or i that point is equal to zero and when is you know we can calculate uh, those area easily and you can say let's uh, that red area a1 which is here 
and let's call uh, the other area let's use orange okay let's call that one is a2 okay when uh, a1 is equal a2 you know we started with zero current we have seen it in the early weeks about the inductance uh, voltage second balance so when we started zero it will reach to the zero current when these two areas are equal but anyway so you don't have to calculate it for now uh, if you are okay with that relation but at the end of the day i have a I have a voltage waveform let's use uh, the red one so this will be uh, my voltage waveform right so again you know that area is the positive area and there is some uh, slight negative area so you can uh, calculate the average voltage uh, by calculating this area but uh, the, the thing is you can uh, give some negative uh, voltage at the output depending on your load okay so let's again quickly uh, talk about what is what happens if you have a dc voltage source and actually you know that thing is a simple model of a dc motor so there's the back emf there's the armature inductance maybe some resistance so on but you have some supply voltage here and you have some uh, dc voltage on the other side so let's uh, have a look at the output voltage so first assume let's we are uh, starting uh, let's talk about that one later on uh, we uh, apply gate gate signal at that instant okay at that instant so once we start that one uh, so now vl okay is equal to if the tire is there is on uh, vl is equal to vs minus ed i mean if that one is larger than ed uh, our vl is positive or in other words our current is uh, is going up if it is negative if vs is smaller than ed then the current uh, gets smaller okay so here what we have this is our uh, ed right so what was it ed right this is our ed it's shown here so once we fire it so our now output voltage again output voltage is defined here so it is directly becoming vs right so now my output voltage is coming like that and at that instant at that instant now ed is equal to vs so at that instant my current reached the maximum but it is still uh, positive and my output voltage is still following here i mean at that instant my input voltage uh, is uh, my source voltage is getting into negative region but my current doesn't reduce to the uh, zero yet but of course depending on the value of that ed and the value of inductance uh, that you know that zero region can happen before that uh, point okay it's not a, it, it doesn't have to be that way but for that specific example uh, the current didn't reach to zero yet so as a result uh, it just you know keep going and going and when does it reach to uh, zero so we have the same relation whenever that a1 is equal to a2 whenever these two areas are equal to each other then we started with zero current then we can uh, end with the zero current okay so when that thing happens when that thing happens so basically our switch becomes open circuited and whenever it is open circuited uh, i is zero and whenever i is zero uh, i will see at the output voltage here my load voltage will not be supplied from vs but it will be supplied from ed i mean in the previous case basically there was no dc supply so you can think that part as zero but here we have a positive uh, supply and it can be the back emf of a dc motor and because of that uh, back emf voltage instead of uh, staying at zero volts i will stay at ed voltage and that is what is happening instead of you know jumping to zero volts i am jumping to ed voltage until when until i am firing it again
and it will just make the same uh, waveform. So uh, it has, you know, that kind of jumping negative voltage, positive voltage. And again, in the overall, you can calculate all that area in one cycle and you can get the average average uh, vd voltage okay so but the uh, main idea is by changing by again moving that angle back and forth i will be able to move the average voltage higher or lower voltages okay and the second graph uh, that is uh, maybe confusing but actually it is uh, simple so it is the thyristor voltage so thyristor voltage uh, whenever it is conducting it is short circuit and whenever it is not conducting whenever it is open circuit on one side you have the vs and on the other side you have vd right so whenever it is conducting so here on all this region on this region it is on okay so whenever it is on i have zero voltage uh, on so it's like a short circuits right and whenever it is not conducting uh, you need to subtract you need to subtract uh, like one side is uh, vs one side is uh, depending on that one ed or ed so and you subtract that one and you have negative so here you have uh, reverse blocking right so in this region, even if you apply a gate signal, since it is like a reverse biased, so it will not get into the conduction mode, right? But in this region, this is uh, the forward blocking. So if it were a diode, it will just get into the conduct conduction mode immediately. But since we are applying a gate signal and we are delaying it a little bit, so it can still forward, uh, it will still block uh, some voltage even if it is like forward biased. Okay, so this is forward blocking, this is reverse blocking, and this is the conducting mode for thyristor. Cool. So now, uh, I mean, let's uh, look at uh, different uh, load types. Now I have an RL load, I have an RL load. But now I would like to add a freewheeling diode. So the circuit uh, becomes like that. So this is exactly the same thing as the uh, previous uh, type. So now I have the thyristor and I have a diode here. So what is th that effect? So that diode freewheeling means that voltage, okay, if it somehow, uh, if VO is less than zero, okay, so that implies you know that is like forward bias and that diode will get into the conduction and it will not allow uh, output voltage to be less than zero but it will try to keep it at zero volts so in other words whenever the output voltage tries to go uh, below zero volts that will get into the conduction mode and the current uh, will flow through that loop okay so that is you know that's the idea of a freewheeling diode so let's have a look at the output waveforms so in the previous case yes uh, it was coming like that you know and it was uh, like moving up then at that instant okay at that instant whenever this is the output voltage whenever output voltage you know in the previous case remember with the uh, normal RL load it was going like that until the current reaches to zero then it makes another jump etc but uh, but with that one right so we have the freewheeling diode so now whenever it touches that point okay so at that point the diode becomes uh, forward conducting uh, forward bias and it start conducting right so and up to now if this is current if this is current so the load is supplied uh, supplied from the source but whenever 
whenever you have that diode on so and that you know now it's cut and then you have that loop and it is basically an LR uh, circuit so LR discharges uh, with time with the exponential delay you know those things and you know that is you know the part that is uh, discharging so what is the advantage of that thing so in some cases we will see the examples you don't want output voltage to go below zero voltage okay because that is uh, affecting uh, your harmonics badly and also the average voltage voltage drops quite a lot so instead of letting output voltage to go to negative and positive which increases your ripple value I just uh, cut it I just clamp it at the zero volts and I just let uh, the free wheeling diode take part and it will just uh, do the uh, free wheeling part and discharging the LR and you know by that way the output voltage is just changing from some positive voltage to zero voltage right so let's stop here uh, for an introduction